If you reserved a Rivian R2 thinking you locked in that exact vehicle you saw on reveal day, I need to stop you right there, because that's not actually what's going to show up in your driveway. And before you panic, this isn't all bad news. In fact, some of the changes are genuinely exciting, others quietly frustrating. And that combination is exactly why the Rivian R2 today isn't quite the same vehicle you thought you reserved. Let's break down what's changed, why it matters, and what it really means if your name is on that reservation list. When the R2 was first revealed just over a year ago, it instantly felt like the electric SUV people had been waiting for. It checked boxes that no other EV seemed to get right all at once. Adventure ready, premium without feeling flashy, and most importantly, finally attainable for a much wider audience. A $45,000 starting price, up to 300 miles of range, that unmistakable Rivian design language, it felt like a turning point, not just for the brand, but for electric vehicles as a whole. And here's the key thing. The R2 never felt like a stripped-down compromise. It didn't come across as a budget version of something better, unlike how the Model 3 often feels like a concession compared to the Model S. The R2 still looked and felt like a true Rivian. Same DNA, same personality, just packaged smaller, simpler, and with fewer seats. But since that reveal, Rivian hasn't stood still. In fact, they've been quietly reshaping the R2 in ways that most reservation holders probably don't fully realize yet. Let's start with how and where this thing is being built. Originally, Rivian planned to manufacture the R2 at an entirely new facility in Georgia. That's still part of the long-term strategy. But plans changed. To move faster and get vehicles into customers' hands sooner, Rivian shifted early production to its existing plant in Normal, Illinois. That decision alone has major implications. It allows Rivian to start deliveries in the first half of 2026 instead of waiting years for a new factory to ramp up. And according to ongoing updates, production is very much on track. But the real story here is how the R2 is being constructed Rivian is using massive high-pressure die castings as part of the body structure. Just in the rear section alone, three large castings replace roughly 50 stamped parts and more than 300 weld points. That's a huge deal. Fewer parts means fewer failure points, fewer welds means better consistency, and faster assembly means Rivian can scale production more efficiently without sacrificing quality. Construction is already underway for parts storage, the paint shop, and final assembly lines. The plan is to build up to 155,000 R2s per year in Illinois until 2028. After that, production shifts to Georgia, where both the R2 and R3 are expected to scale to around 200,000 units annually. In other words, Rivian isn't dabbling here, they're committing hard. Now let's talk powertrains, because this is where things get especially interesting. The R2 is coming with three distinct configurations. First, a single-motor rear-wheel drive setup for affordability and efficiency. Then a dual-motor all-wheel drive option for balanced performance. And finally, the headline grabber, a tri-motor configuration with two motors in the rear and one up front. That setup isn't just about speed, it's about control traction, and legitimate off-road capability. This is Rivian staying true to its adventure roots even in a smaller, more accessible SUV. Battery tech has changed significantly since the reveal. Rivian is moving away from Samsung's LFP cells and instead switching to a 4695 type NMCA cylindrical battery cell sourced from LG. These cells will be produced at LG's new Arizona facility, which is expected to be fully operational just in time for R2 production. The payoff? Over 300 miles of range on higher trims and better cost efficiency for entry-level models. That's how Rivian keeps the R2 affordable without sacrificing usability. So far, so good. But now we need to talk about features, because this is where things get complicated. 
At the reveal, the R2 showcased several clever, standout details that made it feel genuinely different. Some of those features are still making it to production. The powered rear glass hatch? Confirmed. The front trunk? Confirmed. Tow hitch? Confirmed. The charge port relocation to the rear driver's side, far more convenient for fast charging, also confirmed. Those are real wins. But not everything survived the transition from concept to production. One of the most hyped features early on was the rear seats folding completely flat. Rivian even emphasized this in early messaging, clearly positioning the R2 as a vehicle you could sleep in comfortably on adventures. That's no longer the case. The rear seats no longer fold fully flat. Rivian's explanation is improved lateral support and better everyday comfort for passengers. And sure, that makes sense from a design perspective. But if you were planning an interior sleep setup, this change stings. It's still possible, but it's less elegant, less comfortable, and less clever than originally promised. Then there's the accessory port. At the reveal, this port was shown powering modular gear and accessories. Some even speculated it could tie into future mobility products. Quietly, without announcement, it disappeared from official materials. No explanation, no clarification, no roadmap. And that silence is what bothers people the most. Now let's talk about demand and timing. R2 production is still targeted in the first half of 2026, the online configurator is expected to open in late 2025. In the first 24 hours after the reveal, Rivian received roughly 68,000 reservations. By mid-year, that number had climbed well beyond 100,000, and that's the last official update we've had. Clearly, interest hasn't gone anywhere. So where does all of this leave us? Despite the changes, some things remain exactly the same. Rivian is still targeting that $45,000 starting price. The R2 is still unmistakably a Rivian in both design and philosophy. It's still a brand new platform shared with the R3. The tri-motor variant is still coming, and it's still built for people who want adventure baked into their vehicle. There's even been teasing that certain iconic colors might return. Details like that matter more than people realize. Here's my honest take. I still think the R2 is one of the most exciting electric vehicles on the horizon. It represents a new chapter, not just for Rivian, but for EVs becoming genuinely attainable without losing personality. But I can't ignore the fact that some of the features that made the R2 feel special were quietly removed. No announcement, no explanation, and those details were what made the vehicle feel clever thoughtful, and different. Scaling production is hard.